Welcome back to New Day. If you're just joining us, I'm Jim Dever from that uh, very popular show in the evening called Evening, and I'm in here uh, for Amity today. By now, most incoming college freshmen know where they'll be going to school in the fall, but what happens after you get there? Our next guest, Harlan Cohen, has a best-selling guide to college life, and he talked with Amity specifically about the challenges facing the class of 2022. You don't shy away from awkward topics in here, like naked roommates. Is this something that you dealt with? You know, I was not the naked roommate. I wasn't plagued by a naked roommate, but I will often visit schools and people will come up to me and they'll say, hey, I'm the naked roommate. <laughs> and it just changes the whole context of that conversation. Oh, I'm sure it does. <laughs> So let's talk about the book. You know, it's a, we're living in a strange time now. Many incoming college freshmen had a big chunk of their high school experience wiped out because of the pandemic. So how do you prepare them for the big transition? So one of the things I encourage students to do is to find their places. And when I talk about places, it's where are you going to sweat, play, pray, live, learn, lead, love, and work, and find a place where you're going to be included, where you're going to be welcomed, where you don't have to audition, you don't have to try out. Mm -hmm. Spiritual groups are great because they let you in. Even if you're not into God, you could be into free food and nice people, but it's going to give you a safe place where you can anchor yourself. I love that you do give tips in the book about, you know, safe things, safe places, like yeah. being aware of roommate bullying for, for many things, including sexual orientation. That's another great part of the book. Why is it so important to, to put these little factoids in here throughout giving all these tips? Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because, you know, if you're in a new place surrounded by new people, whether it's your sexual orientation, whether it's your identity, your ethnicity, it's important to find a community of people who understand what it's like to go through your journey. But if you don't have a place and you don't have people who you can turn to when you encounter these things that are uncomfortable, well, it can be very lonely and it can be really scary. And all of these students sharing really help other students to know I'm not alone and this is normal. So now what do I do to help myself? Yeah. And what about things like homesickness? You know, how do you fight that and then build a support system at college when you know no one. So you don't fight it. That's the key. Because if you fight it, then it consumes you because you're spending all your time thinking about other people and other things away from home. So you accept it. And it's part of getting comfortable with the uncomfortable. You say, listen, if I'm worried about being homesick, I'm going to think in my mind, what does it feel like to be homesick? What am I going to do when I'm homesick? Where am I going to put myself? Who am I going to surround myself with? What activities can I participate in? And how long will it take for me to start to acclimate and make where I am my new home? We don't elevate and escalate and become more anxious. We're like, okay, this is normal. What do I do now? A lot of times when kids apply for college, they don't get into their first choice school, but they, you know, we, we go to college. So they choose their second choice school. How do you deal with that? Or what advice can you share for kids who, you know, stay motivated if they're not where they really wanted to be? This was a crushing year for admissions. Mm. More students did not get into their dream schools. And I tell those students, listen, not getting into your dream school is actually a really awesome thing oh. because when you go to school, you have different expectations. A lot of students who go to dream schools, they get there and, and they think, okay, school, do your thing. Yeah. Make your magic. But when you don't go to a dream school, you have to be the one to make your magic. Mm -hmm. You have to be the one to create your experience. You actually talk about sex and a lot of kids who are going to be going to college for the first time, these are their first experiences. Why was it so important for you to delve into this and really give these kids like very honest tips about yeah. this? I wanna be clear, when it comes to personal choices, uh, I share lots of student points of view. And the important part of this is we want students to know that there's lots of different choices you can make. And if you make this choice or you make that choice, here are some of the outcomes. And if it's a positive outcome, wonderful. And if it's a negative outcome, well, know that you're supported and you have people around you. Hopefully you will make thoughtful, healthy decisions with an understanding of what will happen next and having the stories of students who have been there and done it and talked about their experiences and made it clear what they wish they had done or what they wish they hadn't done it's really powerful. And if they don't have people who are going to be honest with them, 
how are they going to learn? Because in our schools, there is not a lot of education when it comes to making these choices and being supported while you are navigating this new world. I have one more question for you. I also really like that you have included drinking and drugs. Drug use and drinking can be due to mental health issues and feeling homesick. So what can students do to stay emotionally and physically well and healthy at college? I am a big fan of therapy. I have a therapist who I see regularly. If, you're, if you've had someone who you talk to, make sure you have that person ready before you need them. Also okay. identify those people who are experts who can be there for you. It's a wonderful way to make sure that you are supported during this, this time of change. Tip number 56, close distance relationships. Don't date anyone who lives on your floor in your hall. Where was this book in 1985?